In this video, I'm going to take two VBA applications that are extremely slow to run, and I'm going to get them to run in under a second. So let's go ahead and get started. The first project that we have here, you can see it's just a standard list of data. Now the issue here is that the user wants to get rid of all the rows where D equals to zero. So you can see they've got lots of different rows where D equals zero, and the code that they've written so far is very slow. So let's take a look at that code. So you can see the user's code is pretty straightforward. They're simply looping through all the rows and then checking for the four column to see if it equals zero and if so, they're deleting. But the problem is that it's taking a long time for this code to complete. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a timer to the code and we're going to see how long it actually takes. So I declare my timer class. So this is a class that I've created for myself. And then we use start to kick off the timer. And when the code completes, we'll write out the results to the immediate window so we can see exactly how long it took. Now it's taken a long time to run, so I'm just going to run it on a subset of the records. So we're just going to run it on the first 10 records. And that should be enough to give us an idea of how long it's actually taking. So we run the code and we'll just skip to the end. So you can see here that it took 249 seconds to run or approximately four minutes. So this is quite a lot just to delete 10 rows. So we've got to come up with a better way of writing this code so that it doesn't take so long to complete because we've got thousands of rows in our data and this could take forever if we don't do something with the code. Deleting rows is extremely slow. So what we're going to do is come at it with a different approach. So instead of deleting the rows, what we'll actually do is we'll clear the data from the rows. But before we do that, what we want to do is we want to sort the data. So we put all the rows that we're going to delete at the bottom. So we'll sort by largest to smallest. Now this puts all the rows where column D is zero, it puts them all down at the bottom. And once we have them all at the bottom, we're just going to select all these rows in the code and we're going to clear everything, including the contents and the formatting. And this will give us the same result as if we just deleted all the rows. So let's go ahead and write the code ourselves. So the first thing I do is I create the reset to sheet sub. And what this does is basically resets our data each time that we run our code. So it saves us having to manually go back and set up the data each time. So what this does is it simply copies our backup sheet and renames it to sponsored. Now that we've that done, let's get started on writing our code to perform the row deletions. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start our timer. So we declare our timer variable and then we do C start. And then at the end, when the code is completed, we'll know how long it took to run. Then we do call turn off functionality. Now this is a sub that I've written that turns off the different functionality that might slow our code down. We then declare our worksheet and we set this worksheet variable to be assigned to the worksheet sponsored. Now once we have the worksheet, we want to get the range. And we're going to set the range to equal to a1 on the worksheet, and then we're going to use current region. And what current region does is it gives us all the adjacent data. We want to remove the header from our range of data. So what we do there is we just offset one and resize it to the same size minus one row, and that will essentially get rid of our header. Then we want to get the column that we're going to sort on, which is column four, and that is the one with the zeros. So we set column equal to current range, and we use the columns collection and we select column four. So now we're going to sort our range and we're going to sort it using column four as the key. We're going to sort it in descending order. And then we're going to store the time. So this means after we sort, we'll know how long it took us to sort. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the first row that has the zeros. So after we've sorted, we want to find the first row with the zeros and we want to build up our range from there. So we're going to store the find time as well, which should be pretty short. And then we say, we just check that it finds something. If it doesn't find anything, then there isn't any zeros. So we just declare our delete range variable and we assign this to be the range we're going to delete. So it's going to start with the first row with the zero and it's going to go down to the last row and it's going to be all the columns within the range. And once we've done that, we simply do range clear. So we don't delete the rows, we clear everything for our, from the rows, which is essentially the same, 
but it's way, way faster. And then we're going to store the time so we can see how long it took us to delete the data. And then we'll print all the results to our immediate window. And then we're finished everything, we'll turn back on our functionality. So let's check our spreadsheet first of all to make sure that it's in the right position so that our code will run correctly on it. So you can see it's got all the zeros. So this is it in its initial state. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the code and we go back and you can see it's removed all the rows with the zeros. So if we go up or down, all those rows have been removed. So how long did our code take to run? So let's have a look in our immediate window. You can see that it took half a second. So this was a much faster way to do, to do it. Now, if you wanted to keep the order of the rows, what you'd have to do is add another column and then add a sequence of numbers like one, two, whatever in that column. So now we're looking at project two. And in project two, we have a list of rows that have multiple different fam codes. And for each one of these fam codes, we want to look at the best all column and we want to get the minimum value for that. And we want to place that in the min val column. So for example here, 316 is the minimum value. So for each one of the fam codes, we want to put it in that column. And again, for the next one where the fam code ends in 002, the minimum one is 4.55. Now obviously we're ignoring all blanks. And so we do this for each fam code so that we've got the minimum column completely filled. So this is the existing code that was written. And this code is taking quite a long time to run. Now there are 7,000 records, but we're going to run it for the first 1,000 records just to see how long it takes. So we run the code, and when you see the result, you can see that it took 22 seconds for this code to run. So that means when we have seven times as many records, it's going to take three and a half minutes. But in reality, it'll probably take a lot more longer because the length tends to compound. Now the problem we can see in the code is that we're referencing the range a lot. So you can see the lines of code here where we're setting the range and then we're using the worksheet function min on the range. And some of these worksheet functions can be very slow when we're using them on ranges. So you can see how much we're referring to the range here. And depending on the number of records, this just grows and grows and grows. So what I want to do is I want to get this running in under a second. So to do so, I'm going to completely rewrite this code, but it will perform exactly the same task. So the first thing that we do is declare our timer. So we do dim my timer as new CLS timer, and this is my timer class. And then we start our timer. And then at the end, we'll print out the result. So we'll know how long it takes for this code to run. Then we declare a table variable. So because the data is in a table, we're going to refer to it as a table because this is an easy way for us to get the data. So we use this workbook worksheets. So that's the name of our worksheet. And then we use the list object and list objects, given it the name, will give us back our table. Then we declare our dictionary and we'll get back to using the dictionary in a moment. But first of all, we'll declare our array and then we'll put all the data from the table. So from the data body range into our array. And this means it's going to be much faster to read through the data. Now we're declaring variables here just to make our code look more readable. So now we read through all the data. So this is essentially the same data on the range, but we're reading through it as an array. And we set the fam code to equal whatever value is in the current row in column two, and best of all is column three. So remember column three is the one where we're comparing the value and fam code is we're comparing within the number of codes. So we basically check if the code has already been added to the dictionary. If you want to know more about the dictionary, then check out my dictionary playlist. I leave a link in the description below the video so you can check it out later. And if the fam code doesn't exist, then what we do is we add it and we add it with its best all value. Now, if it does exist already, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it doesn't equal zero because if it equals zero, we just ignore it. And if it's less than the value that we've currently stored already for this code, or if the value that we've currently stored already is zero, then we use the new value. So what we're essentially doing is we're getting the minimum value for each fam code. And the fact that it can be zero, it can be blank, makes it a little bit more complicated, which is why the code seems just that little bit more complicated than if we didn't have to do that. Next up, we call update array to write out the values to the worksheet. Now this should be actually called update range. 
And what we're doing is we're taking our new values and we're going to take them out of the dictionary and write them out. Now how we do it is as follows. We create a new array and this is just an array of one column and this is the one that we're going to write out. And what we do is we read through all the current data and for each of the current data we get the FAM code. So we check the code from the dictionary and by checking it in the dictionary we get back the minimum value and then we write that to our new array. So essentially we're just writing it to the column for that FAM code. And then at the very end what we'll do is we'll write out the entire column in one go to that range. So all we need to do is store the current time. So get the time it took to get to here and then we'll write that out to the immediate window. So let's go ahead and run the code. And when you look in the minval column, you can see that it filled up all the columns as expected. So for fam code one, you can see one zero 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 one. You can see that it's all 316. And for two, you can see that it's four euros 55, then two euros and so on. Now, how fast did this happen? And you can see that it happened in one tenth of a second. Now this is considerably faster than how the original one worked, taking 22 seconds to do a thousand records. So you can see reading to an array is much faster than reading to a range. If you'd like to know more about making VBA code run faster, then check out the video on the screen.